Welcome to another tutorial. In this video I shall be showing you my design for producing a steady DC voltage from an Arduino which does not have an analog voltage output in its design. There are numerous solutions to this problem. If you are controlling the power to a load such as a motor or light bulb which does not require a steady DC voltage, perhaps you may wish to use pulse with modulation. I have covered this in another video and I shall place a link to it. For a steady DC voltage you could use a number of outputs and connect it to an R to R ladder which will use up a lot of output pins. You could use a serial to parallel converter to use less pins but I shall not be using this method. I have made a simple design just using two pins. One pin switches the voltage on or off to charge a capacitor while the other pin measures the analog voltage across the load. Here is the circuit. I have connected the resistor and capacitor to D0. I am using a transistor in a common collector arrangement. This is also called an emitter follower. This is just to buffer the voltage between the capacitor and the load. There are better solutions than this but I am using this method for demonstration purposes only. The transistor will lower the maximum voltage across the load by at least 0.7 volts and it will also load the capacitor somewhat. I am using A0 to measure the voltage across the load. I have also used a potentiometer to produce a voltage at A5, but this is just to give the program a desired level of output. The desired level can be produced in any way you wish. Here is the source code. I am using two variables. One is for storing the measured input from A0 and the other is to set a desired level of output. Bear in mind that on an Arduino Uno, both numbers range from 0 to 1023. In the setup, I set the pins for input and output. I believe that the program must wait at least 100 microseconds between samples, so in the loop I store the values and wait. If the measured voltage across the load is higher than the desired voltage, then this must mean the voltage across the capacitor is too high, so the voltage at D0 is switched off. Otherwise it is switched on. Here is an equation for determining the values of capacitor and resistor attached to D0. The sample rate is the time between sampling the voltage. The program can sample at a quicker rate, which improves the quality of the output voltage, but a figure is used as a starting point for the design. I chose one millisecond. The delta V is the maximum difference in output voltage in one sample. I chose 100 millivolts. This gave me a result of 0.05. This value is divided by either a resistor value or a capacitor value to obtain the other's value. I am using a 1 microfarad capacitor, so 0.05 divided by 1 microfarad gives me a resistor of almost 50 kilo ohms. This is large enough to prevent too much current from being drawn from D0 as the capacitor is being charged. The number 5 in the equation relates to the maximum charging voltage across the resistor and capacitor. Here is the circuit in action. As you can see, the needle does not go to 5 volts because of the volt drop between the base and the emitter of the transistor and its loading effect upon the circuit, but it does indeed work. This method may be sufficient for numerous circuits, but it does impart a small AC voltage upon the DC voltage. If this is a problem, you can produce a steadier voltage by using two output pins to switch on MOSFETs like this. I am using a P-channel MOSFET controlled by D0 at the top and an N-channel MOSFET controlled by D1 at the bottom. What may be confusing is that the top one is switched on when the gate is low and the bottom one is switched on when the gate is high. I am using two resistors both of the same value placed so if you make a mistake and switch on both MOSFETs you will not short out the supply voltage. The table shows you how to switch the MOSFETs on and off to control the charge. When the capacitor's voltage is within a certain range, you can do nothing, and with a very high impedance buffer, the voltage should barely change. This is the test program I have made. I am still using A5 just to conveniently set a desired level of output. I set up the pins including D1. Notice that I have used a new variable called level difference at the top there. In the loop I measure the analog voltages as before. I calculate the difference between them which produces positive or negative results. When the difference is greater than 21, I discharge the capacitor. It is charged when the difference is less than minus 21. If the voltage is within this range, the capacitor is left alone. This is what makes the output so stable. Now I am going to show you why I chose a number 21. 
Earlier, I decided to use a difference in voltage between the samples to be 0.1. I multiply this by 1023, which is the maximum value from an analog read instruction. Then, I divide it by 5, which is the supply voltage. The voltage may be slightly higher or lower, but as I want an approximation, I do not need to concern myself with an exact value. I could also just multiply 0.1 by 205 too. This gives me an approximate value of 21 when I increase the results slightly. It is pointless to use a fractional value as this increases program size and does not improve the particular program. Here is a circuit in action. I am not using a buffer at the moment. I have just connected the meter across the capacitor and as you can see it is very stable and has no AC when the desired level has not moved. You could experiment further by using an operational amplifier as a buffer, but make sure the highest and lowest output voltage is within an acceptable range. You can also use a higher voltage on the op amp and amplify the output voltage too, as long as you use a common ground. Anyway, that's enough for this video. Thank you for listening.